Well, hey folks, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living. On this video, I just wanted to give you an update on some of our growing projects from the summer, our gardening experiments, if you will. It's been about a month since we've briefed you on how our plants are doing. I, about a month ago, I think it was about four, maybe six weeks, depending on the plant, um, I put a lot of seeds in pots, as you can see down here, and um, some up on the deck as well, and some in the garden as well. So I just want to give you an update on this video about how things are coming along. What is it like growing food at high altitude? How's our summer going? We've had um, significant, um, well, I don't know if you can call it significant, but we have had some rain, a lot more than summers in the past. We've had um, some pretty mild temperatures, nothing really, really too hot yet. Of course, it's only July, so the hot, hot weather is yet to come this month. This is our hottest month of the year. But I just wanna give you an update about how things have been coming along in the past about six weeks or so since we've started growing some things up here at the homestead. And that way give you a little bit of an idea of what it's like to grow food and grow plants and um, landscaping and all that kind of thing at high altitude. And uh, uh, let us know what you think as far as um, opportunities for improving our growing up here in the mountains. Thanks. One thing I can really say about putting these uh, plants in pots is that it's really not uh, doing fantastic. I mean, the one thing that is growing are the cool weather crops, like the peas and the radishes. But even the peas, they're kind of yellowy. It's like they're getting bleached out. And, uh, you know, it's mid-July, so it just... Uh, not really uh, producing anything close to any kind of fruit yet. So um, definitely um, this probably, doing the pots was a great experiment, but my conclusion is that that's just not a viable way to get any kind of produce to grow. You know, I thought being on the deck would be good. They'd get plenty of sun and heat and they'd be able to stay a little bit warmer, but it doesn't really seem to be doing much. And then these uh, radishes here, I've got one that's probably close to harvest. Maybe it's about half the size of a regular radish, but it's almost bolting here. You can see this uh, uh, bud coming off. I'm gonna pick it off there. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's a little bit too hot um, on the deck to, um, to have these radishes really grow much more. Um, just, I'm growing a lot of greens at this point. So anyway, that's kind of my experiment there. What's in these pots are just wildflowers. And I had these seeds going, um, you know, since early June and not even close to, to blooming. And I'll show you a comparison of the driveway, um, the wildflowers that are blooming there. I mean, they're doing great. Um, an update on the, the pots that were outside, not on the deck, that um, it's been about a month since my previous update to see how things were going. Now, in the bucket here, we've got potatoes. Those are doing pretty well. That seems to be an easy thing to do. They're already coming out of the dirt. Um, next step would be to put them in the ground ground to kind of encourage the potatoes to grow um, more. But those are doing great. Uh, this pot had romaine lettuce seeds. And look what I have here, just a baby romaine. And I think there, I saw a couple more spots of green. Yeah, there's one over here. And there was like one right here. I just watered it so they're kind of buried with some of the, some of the dirt. So not much to brag about there. Um, in this pot, I've got kale. This has been a baby kale for, my gosh, like the past month. It hasn't really grown much. And then I saw another one coming up over here, but again, I just watered. So I think the dirt probably covered it up. Not a lot of progress. Uh, I had one beet growing. I planted a sprouted seed, sprouted seeds in here, um, like I said, about um, almost six weeks ago. And we've got one beet coming up. The greens are promising. Who knows what the size of the beet is? Maybe a golf ball if we're lucky, but just not a lot. I know how things grow in pots, especially root vegetables. You're not gonna get really large, large um, fruits or vegetables off of them, if you will. but um just yeah not a robust growing situation so let's take a look at the garden beehive over there for reference but uh so the one thing that does great without any effort is the rhubarb i already harvested half of it this year to make a rhubarb crisp um, and it's doing pretty well we have another couple giant leaves coming and um that's that's pretty sturdy this might stay here permanently i've got some of the transplanted ground cover 
uh, landscaping sort of um, uh, plants and uh, the sedums do really well. This is a dwarf bleeding heart. It's a very cute plant if you can zoom in on the flower there. Um, but uh, they're about the same size. They haven't grown much. They haven't grown much in the past month. Um, I did get a surprise crop of arugula. So this is what you call volunteer arugula where the seeds from last year's self-seeded and they grew, they grew into their own plant this year. So I got one in, in a spot where I planted it and I got a couple more on the edge here. Um, and uh, anyway, so they're a little bit leggy. The greens are really, really thick. Um, not like a tender leaf. I don't really know what kind of variety arugula this is, but um, it likes to go to seed really quickly. So I find myself um, picking off the, the heads here to kind of preserve keep it from going to seed so fast it's hard to keep up with so um, that's that and the native stuff this is sage this is just a native weed that grows I did nothing I did not plant this it just grew here and I just have let it grow there I actually I like the sage I think it's pretty and it smells nice so I just leave that there the other big crop that we have in the garden uh, our very small garden, are strawberries. These were strawberries that came from a friend up here. He said that they grow really, really well. He's had so much fruit that he's um, had to freeze berries, and he just was giving us these plants because he had too many. He had to thin out. Um, and by mid-July, you can kind of see that we've got, uh, we've got berries here. Um, I think they would do better if they were watered very regularly. I've been trying to water them but you know I what I end up doing is using a bucket and it's just not ideal I think for the amount of water that these berries really could use see the how they're kind of sunken looking and I know they haven't all the way matured yet but I think they could be they could be bigger and they could be a little bit juicier with more water and this is just a dry patch this is just a dry area so they tend to stay small now it'll be a miracle if I can keep the birds out. I don't have any um, uh, netting right now to keep the birds out, but they're green. You know, maybe a few more, maybe another five, another five days. This one was starting to blush a little bit, but uh, anyway, there's more strawberries on here than there were last year, and there's certain plants that are doing better than others. But um, you know, I probably almost stepped on one because I'm not really paying attention, but the strawberries are, uh, do well, and I, I don't do a lot to take care of them. This is the third year for the strawberries. I planted them three years ago, and they come back every year. They produce a handful of berries, but I think as they send out runners, and as we can improve the, um, the irrigation of this patch, I think the strawberries have potential to do really, really well. Um, once we finish off the retaining wall area, I can move these landscaping plants and I'll take all of them out of here and I'll just let this all get taken over as strawberry bed. I think that would be great. That would be my, that would be ideal. The plants, I did plant zucchini uh, in early June and the zucchini plants, uh, because I have not covered them this year with uh, sun cloth, they have kind of dwarfed. Um, they haven't really grown. They're about the same size, if not maybe 10%, 20% bigger than they were when I purchased them at the store. So they uh, disappointingly have not grown this year. I've kept up with watering them, but that doesn't seem to be the, um, bi the biggest factor. I think the biggest factor is the sun is a little bit oppressive, so they don't they don't proliferate, they just don't get big. Because two years ago when I grew zucchini, they looked as big, they were as big as the, um, as the rhubarb. Um, so anyway, the rest of the garden is a lot of just cover plants mixed in with some weeds, you know, the sage, which I just let grow. You know, some of the weeds are really pretty, like this, um, I think this is called penstemon. Um, it's just a native weed that's a flowering. Uh, some plants I've gotten from friends. This is a creeping thyme. So these are all really great ground covers that will be good for landscaping around the house. This is the other zucchini plant, like you can see, just as small as it was a month ago. So not really taking off at all, which is 
kind of disappointing, but it's a lesson learned. It's good to know that a requirement for zucchini, at least up here, in addition to the watering is the sun protection because the sun will dwarf your plants. Now, it doesn't seem to be a problem for the arugula. The arugula is coming up pretty strong, but it does make a woody plant. It's not very tender leaf right now. Um, it's large, but uh, I, you know, probably, you know, need to pay attention to the sun on the arugula. If I want it more tender, maybe I could protect it from the sun a little bit. So that is sort of the update from the garden. Nothing really um, super amazing happening other than the overall uh, assessment is that drought tolerant plants like these sedums, this is um, actually this is um, uh, dragon's blood a sedum, but it turned green on me. It used to be red, purpley red, and then it turned green. So I don't know what happened there, if that's like a pH thing, but I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, this is a nice little bush called rabbit brush. It has little yellow flowers and this does great. This is a drought tolerant bush that um, I purchased maybe two years ago and it comes back every year and it always looks like it's dead when it comes back, but then it kind of does this thing. It almost, it's almost like an evergreen. So the, it, it just, the drought tolerant um, native plants are the ones that do best. And so that's what I'm going to be doing going forward is looking for things like these hens and chicks. This is another um, drought tolerant, does really well, survives the winter and the cold and comes back every year and just spreads. So if you want a ground cover that's good for high elevation, cold extremes, wind extremes, sun extremes and drought, um, those are the kinds of plants that do really well. This is one I've gotten from the woods. This is another, uh, I think it's like a stone crop. It's like a yellow, I forget what it's called, but um, that's just a native one that I just moved over here. And you can tell just by its flowering, it's, it does really well. It hasn't spread around very much, but it's also an area that hasn't had a lot of attention. I just kind of let it be. And let's see what else. Um, a lot of the a lot of the things are native, like this yarrow plant right here. It's white flowers, um, really fuzzy looking, and um, it's it's a good medicinal plant. But you know, it's just it grows wild all over the hillside, so it's just something that I I let um, stay in the garden. And this yellow one again is that sedum. So if I push it to the side, you can see it's that um, that tall sedum that grows. So. Uh, Another native one that doesn't need a lot of upkeep, tolerates the dryness just fine. So that's the update from the garden. I think definitely that uh, um, some extra attention is going to be needed for sun covering. And then if we go into the uh, fall season, uh, some cold frames would be good to extend stuff for for greens, like cool crops that can grow through September. So they would need a lot of protection from frost overnight. Um, and so it's, it's kind of like that greenhouse idea is looking better and better because it just really, we're just really limited on what we can do here right now with our irrigation situation. You know, I have to do everything carrying water with a five gallon bucket down from the house. So it's really difficult. We don't have a hose that reaches this far. Um, we, so we, we could figure out some ways we could probably move that big water tank that we have and kind of set it up over here if we wanted to kind of create a drip system. That's an option. Um, of course, uh, you don't want to keep your drought tolerant plants constantly wet. I think they're, they want to dry out from time to time. So it kind of puts you in that situation like, okay, what are we actually trying to grow here? Stuff that does better in dry, um, dry soil or stuff that you want to have stay moist. So, um, but um, I can tell you that the bees, I think the overall consensus I heard from um, some scientists was that the nectar flow really wasn't fantastic this year. So I'm still feeding the bees, um, just trying to make sure that they have, they're, they're never in that situation where they don't have food, just in case. It's better than, for them to have the food and not need it, rather than them to uh, need it and not have it. So I just kind of keep that feeder on, which is a really strange thing. It's not something that you do uh, in most other places. Usually you can just take that feeder off, especially if you're 
making honey for, if you, if you want your honey for sale, you don't want honey that's sugar water. You want honey that comes from wildflowers. So, um, Anyway, this is just like a little insurance policy that they have something just in case the nectar flow really is bad. But the way that things are growing around here, it's hard to believe that anything's bad. A lot of the grass is coming up and there's a lot, a lot of wildflowers right now. But, uh, so that's the update folks, as far as um, our sort of our experiment with growing, you know, the few different options that I've tried with um, having some things in the garden, having some things in pots, um, and eventually we're going to probably transition into a more um, structured kind of growing uh, environment with um, garden beds, cold frames, and a little bit more of a reliable uh, irrigation system, like a drip system, I'm thinking, with the water tank. That would probably be good until we end up making that decision about doing a greenhouse. We're still really seriously considering the geodesic dome greenhouse as an option, maybe next year. Um, it just kind of depends on what we want to do, what are our goals as far as, you know, being able to grow stuff. And I think with the way that trends seem to be going these days of being um, a little bit more sustainable and especially supporting our community, like we're trying, our, up, up here, you know, there's not a lot of people that are growing food for the masses. And it seems like that's People are caring more about that these days. So that might be something we could consider as well as growing some specialty food items um, if, that's, if there's a demand in the community. Because we do have farmer's markets. There's just not a ton of variety right now. So anyways, guys, thanks for joining in and uh, checking out our update as, as far as the, um, the garden goes and our experiments in growing. Um, it's almost middle of the summer so it's kind of hard to say we're going to make much more progress at this point things are going to start to dry up more um, typically this is our driest season of the year is um, midsummer and last year we had a really rainy summer so we still had a lot of growing opportunities um, and wildflowers and the bees did great and they made a lot of honey but this year it's kind of an unknown in so many reasons, right? In so many different ways, right? There's just so many, there's just so many unknowns this year, but um, we'll keep you posted and I'll keep you posted on the grow light as well. Cause I think I'm going to get that set up pretty soon as to kind of um, do yet another experiment in growing to see if getting things started as pretty significant seedlings help with a fall planting. Okay guys, thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.